Hey guys, I'm Gamer Mate. Welcome back to a new video. So I'm here back in Cyro Box Studio. And in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to make a very hard game part 4. So let's get into the video. So over here, you can see I have this new map. So what this is, is going to be a maze. So this is where the players are going to be teleported to, which is a front door. Then over here, we have an exit door. So what we need to do first is make an item to actually teleport to the... Um, the maze. So what's going to happen is you're going to go through this door by finding a key, then get teleported to here, then you go through the exit door, and also we're going to be making an NPC that follows you and kills you. So the first thing we're going to be doing is going over to the front door, which is here, click a plus in workspace, add in a folder, and then name this folder to teleport points, like that. Then inside of it, we can add in a part, change the position to about here, then also scale it. Then if we click part, go to properties, and then change the name to maze teleport, like this. Then change the transparency to 1, then scroll down, then make sure can collide is unticked, like this. Now what we need to do is drag the part inside of the teleports folder, like this. So once we have that, I'm just going to be making a bit more dialogue and a new tool to find the key. Okay, so once we open the door and touch the trigger, then you can see it says there's a gym key on the chair. So if we take it, then go up to the gym door. Then we touch the trigger, then the trigger disappears, you can't really see it in the game because nothing happens, but if we click stop. So what we need to do now is inside of our main game script, if you open it, and then above this local function main game, we can go down, if we type in local function, and then teleport, two brackets, and then position, then local players, equals to game, dot players, colon get players two brackets go down and now type in for i comma player then in pairs two brackets and then players and then do go down and you enter the pair and then type in if player dot character then go down once again and you enter the pair and then do player dot character dot humanoid dot jump equals to true go down and now type in player dot character colon set primary part c frame two brackets and then position like that now what we need to do is go down to where we touch the trigger then we can type in teleport brackets then game dot workspace dot teleport points dot maze teleport dot c frame then that should be the teleport script but right now all it does is teleport you so i want to make a transition so to do that we need to go to started gui Make a new screen GUI and then name it to transition GUI like that. Click plus, add in a frame, then make sure the frame size is 1, 0, 1, 0, like that. Then I'm going to be changing the background colour to black. So what we need to do now is go to background transparency and set that to 1. So make sure it's set to 1 and make sure visible is ticked. So once we've done that, we need to go to start player, open it up, go to start the character scripts, click plus, add in a local script, and name this to transition script, like that. And before we carry on, we actually need to go to replicate storage, open it up, go to remote events, click plus, add a remote event, and name this to transition event, like that. 
Now we can go back to the script and type in local player equals to game dot players dot local player. Go down and now type in local tween service equals to game colon get service two brackets speech marks and then tween service like that. Go down and now type in local remote event equals to game dot replicate storage dot remote events and then dot transition event. Go down and now we need to type in is local frame equals to player dot player gy colon wait for child two brackets and speech marks and then type in transition gy outside of brackets do dot frame like this go down and now type in remote event dot on client event colon connect two brackets function two more brackets and then go down like this then type in local info equals to tween info dot new two brackets and then type in two go down and now type in local visible equals to two pointy brackets like this go down and then type in local invisible equals to once again two point brackets like this then type in visible dot background transparency equals to zero so this means that the visible tween makes the background transparency set to zero which makes it visible then do the same for invisible so invisible dot background transparency equals to one and type in local tween visible equals to tween service colon create two brackets and then frame comma info once again comma visible go down and type in local tween invisible equals to tween service colon create two brackets then once again frame comma info comma event invisible like that go down twice and type in tween visible colon play two brackets and then go down then type in wait two brackets and then number four once again go down and type in tween invisible colon play two brackets and then that's it if we close off the script go back inside our main script and at the top where it says like local dialog event local objective event we can go down and type in local transition event equals to game dot replicate storage dot remote events colon find first child two brackets and speech marks and then transition event like this once we have that we can go down to our teleport function and above that we can type in transition event colon fire all clients two brackets then underneath that so between the teleport function and the transition Make sure you add in a wait of two seconds, like this. So let's test it out. So click play. So if you go to the gym door and touch the trigger, then you can see it fades to black, it teleports us, and then it unfades. And you can see we're now inside the maze, like this. So if you click stop, and now what we're going to be doing is making an NPC. So if we just add in a dummy and by doing that we click plugins and you should have this automatically added plugin called build rig. If we click it a new window should appear and then add in a block rig in R15. 
Now you can see we have a dummy. So I'm going to be quickly customising him. Also make sure your dummy's body parts are not anchored. So open up the NPC. Select all his body parts. Scroll down. And make sure anchored is unticked. Like this. Now what we need to do is just put him inside the map. So about here. And then click plus. Add in a script. And now if you type in local monster equals to script dot parent go down and type in monster dot humanoid dot touched colon connect function two brackets and then hit then go down and type in if hit and game dot players colon get play from character two brackets and then hit dot parent then go down and type in hit.parent.humanoid colon take damage two brackets so if you type in a number if you do something like 20 then the player will lose 20 health then once you have that we can go down from this end and type in function find player two brackets and then position so if we go down and type in local list equals to game dot workspace colon get children two brackets go down local torso equals to nil once again go down and type in local distance equals to and then let's do a hundred go down and type in local humanoid root part equals to nil then local humanoid equals to nil go down and type in local player equals to nil go down and type in for i equals to one comma hashtag and then list do go down and type in player equals to list square brackets and then i like that Go down and type in if and then two brackets player dot class name equals equals to model then and brackets player doesn't equals to script dot parent then go down and type in humanoid root part equals to player colon find first child brackets and speech marks and then humanoid root part like that go down and type in humanoid equals to player colon find first child brackets and speech marks and then humanoid like that then if you go down and type in if brackets humanoid root part doesn't equal to nil and two brackets humanoid doesn't equals to nil then once again and two brackets humanoid dot health is higher than zero then go down and type in if two brackets humanoid root part dot position minus position then outside brackets we could type in dot magnitude is less than distance then go down and then type in torso equals to humanoid root part once again go down and type in distance equals to brackets humanoid root part dot position minus position then outside brackets we do dot magnitude and now what we need to do is underneath these ends, so make sure there's one, two, three, four. So make sure there's one end here. And in between those, we could type in return torso, like that. And underneath this end, we could go down and type in while true do. Go down. Once again, a new end should appear. And type in wait 
brackets, one second, go down and type in local target equals to find player, two brackets, and script dot parent dot humanoid root part dot position, like that. Go down and type in if target doesn't equals to nil, then once again go down, then do script dot parent dot humanoid colon move to two brackets then target dot position comma then target like that and once you do this we can close off the script test it out and then walk over here they can see that once he finds us then he can chase us and if we touch him then he kills us you can also see that he's a bit fast and he has no animation so if we click stop so first of all, I'm going to be changing his walk speed. So we click him, click humanoid, and scroll down. And you can see walk speed. We can change that to something like 10. To get an animation, I'll click toolbox. And then let's just use one from this zombie, which is made by Roblox. So click it, add him in, close off toolbox. And then inside the zombie, you can see the script called animate inside of him he has all these animations so right click the script click cut delete the zombie once again click the npc right click him click paste into and now he should have the animation script once again if we click play and test it out so if we walk over to him there you go now you can see he has a proper walk animation oh Oh no, you can see he still kills us, and there's his idle animation. So guys, that's going to be it for today's video. If this video helped, make sure to leave a like, comment and subscribe down below. In the description you can check my Roblox group and Discord server, and I'll see you later. Bye!